Hello and welcome to this Project in a Box video session. Uh, this is the second session looking at the new features in Planner version 5. Um, and in this session we're going to move on from the first one, calendar milestones and colours for risk ratings, to look at some more of the detailed data aspects. So collecting new status and commentaries uh, for task risks and issues, um, plan progress to date, more issue data and then how some of that information is going to be uploaded to the main application for further analysis. So let's get started. This is the plan we were looking at uh, in the first session as well. Um, let's go and have a look at issues first. So I'm going to come into my issues area here um, and uh, as I open up one of my issues you will see that the form looks pretty much the same as it did before with the general comment and responses tab none of which have changed um, except for the new tab which is impact. So this allows us to identify for a particular impact the effect it's going to have on the project in terms of days, time impact, money, cost impact and a quality impact. Of course your uh, issue may have um, no effects on the project, um, it may affect all three areas, it may affect one or two of them. Um, so you can simply note down which those are. Um, when it comes to quality impacts uh, you can have a 0 to 10 rating if you select zero, the system identifies that as having no quality impact. If you select something higher than zero, um, it considers of having a quality impact. And you can then describe what that quality impact is because it's a bit difficult to quantify quality impacts. They can be so broad in terms of the effects they have. So we're collecting that information for each issue. This isn't at the response level. This is at the issue level um, uh, for the project. We don't have to record this against all of our issues if we want to, don't want to. In fact, we don't have to use it at all if we don't want to. But if we're maturing through the process of managing issues, um, we're going to move from a simple measure, which is what's the severity of the issue, um, to actually quantifying that in terms of severity, cost, time, quality, etc. So that information is being collected against each of our issues. Of course, using the view, as we've done before, we could have those extra columns of data showing here um, in the display. And we'll be able to filter by them, etc., in the way that we've done before. Um, now, that information has been rolled up for us, and this brings us nicely on to the next area, which is collection of statuses and commentaries. Um, here at the top, I've got a status button uh, which is showing me red status for issues. Um, if I go to risks we'll see that's uh, an orange one and plan happens to be a green one. Um, now that's uh, an indicator but it also enables me to click on it to update the information. So if I click on that I get the form opening up and we can see again the same three tabs in here, plans, risks and issues um, and my issue status here is uh, red like a pick list so I can choose the one I want and of course those pick lists are manageable in our lookups the same as we did earlier with our uh, risk rating colorings so I've got an issue status I can choose what that is I can um, write a commentary about that issue status as well um, and keep that information here now when I'm doing that something that's going to be very important to help me understand what, what that is going to be is going to be these stats. So this is our same things, cost impact uh, and time impact rolled up across all the issues in the project. The number of quality impacts, so these are the number of non-zero quality uh, scores and then the average quality score. So if we've had um, a couple at nine and a couple at, uh, at uh, zero we're going to that, sorry, that's not true, <laughs> uh, because it doesn't count zero ones, of course. So these are all non-zeros, and um, it's just giving you the average of the uh, the values selected. So it's generating these stats for me, so very useful when I'm writing my commentary. Um, and if we're using a sort of tolerance system, like in Prince 2, we may have a tolerance in terms of these uh, effects, which um, which drive whether we should be in a particular status. So that's for issues. Same thing applies to risks. I can again choose my status, write my commentary, and again it shows me the stats that the system has been calculating. Actually we've been using these for quite a while already, um, but showing them here on the form so I can see them as I'm writing my text. Um, a number of these stats, total risk rating, inherent residual, 
and not closed inherent residual um, these are already being fed out to the main system as project properties when you check your project plan in it feeds that data out and these new ones here are going to be added to that list these issue ones as well when we come through to the plan area not so many stats here for us um, but an, a particular new one which is very much of interest so we've got this new stat called plan, plan progress to date let's go off and investigate that a little bit in the planning uh, view so I come to the plans tab now people often um, say they want to know if their project is on track that's a key thing sponsors knowing that project managers knowing that is the project on track actually that's a very difficult thing to answer usually um, in terms of the data that you have easily available to you um, and this is a common display and the one that's often used which is showing today's date and the rolled up percentage complete of all the tasks shown against the project summary bar so this project started uh, back in uh, February and it ends in May so there's a certain number of days duration the percentage complete is laid up against that and if the percentage complete is ahead of today's date or on today's date you'd think you're on track for the project now if the project's a simple waterfall without any overlapping tasks um, and without gaps in it then yes that's probably a pretty good representation but plans are often not as simple as that there's many tasks that run in parallel there might be big gaps while you're waiting for things to happen in the middle of the project so um, so that can give a fluctuation in terms of a simple display against the overall project duration um, and that's the case here so um, actually if we look in a bit more detail and come down further we can, in fact let's just do it like this we can see that we've got some tasks here which are um, behind they're not everything that they should be today so we've got some things that should be uh, complete by today or should be progressed further by today but they're not um, and that's why we've got a measure here plan progress to date is 97 percent so we're pretty much there but we're not quite there because there's a few things that are not quite completed um, and that's exactly what that's telling you so that measure is looking at every task due by today and any partial tasks due by today and what their percentage completes are so um, uh, it's much more focused around the things that you should have done by now than the overall percentage complete line so now we've got two measures for our project we've got the plan percentage plan uh, progress uh, to date this one and we've got our project percentage complete uh, and actually using the two uh, together will be a good way of identifying where you are with your project and um, both of these are available of course as plan properties project properties in the main system so um, you really useful the new measure which does tell you exactly um, whether you are on track with your project in fact it can never be greater than a zip than a hundred because it only ever looks at the dates uh, the activities up to today so even if you've got things ahead so even if I came to here and uh, updated this task to be even you know 100% complete um, it's in the future so it has no bearing at all on our plan progress to date so that's a very focused measure that you can use to identify where you are with your projects um, so a load of new properties there that we're, collect, uh, that we're calculating and sending through um, we're also sending through some other new stats um, in a bit more detail around task management so for example the number of overdue tasks the number of tasks not yet started the number of tasks completed so that you can run statistical analyses across sets of projects in parallel again going through as project properties to the main system you don't necessarily see them in here um, the next thing I wanted to talk about was actually the rest of the data that we're now taking through to the main system which is really quite an interesting rich set of information um, so we've been giving you for some time now in planner the ability to collect actuals data of course when you're planning your project and you allocate somebody to a task with a percentage there's some information that rolls out of that so we can see here this timesheet view is a different way of looking at the plan information it's showing for me uh, or 
for a different user I might want to select but here for me the tasks on the project whether I'm allocated to them um, uh, and if I am uh, what that allocation is and what that means in terms of hours that I'm I should be spending on that particular task I can then fill in the actual hours I have spent in some cases it might be more or less on different tasks um, but it's showing me uh, those there and in fact I can come and put the next one in for here so I can say I've spent three hours on that and I've come down and spent another certain number of hours on another task that's all rolled up using the costing information and stored at the task level now um, we've always been or for a little while anyway been bringing out to the main application um, some key top level metrics um, about the project finances so we can see some of those here um, the total cost for the project uh, so the cumulative uh, total cost we're now bringing out cumulative progress cost cumulative actual cost which allows you to see where you are against where you should be in terms of cost spend um, these are of course rolled up and held financially in planner at the task level because there may be a number of assignments in this particular case this task here has three different assignments three different people working on that task um, and in one row it's very difficult to see that information unless you normalize it down into the financial figures which is what's been done here that's then of course rolled up to the project level figures um, so we, we've got that information uh, of course we hold the assignments in the background and what we're doing now is we're loading when we load this file back into the main application we're bringing all that assignment information through as well so you've got a database of every assignment that's happening on every task you can see um, how much time is budgeted against those and how much is actually spent against those um, and that's available into a database so you'll be able to go and get all the data for your project or you'll be able to go and get all the data for the portfolio um, you'll be able to dump all that out into Excel and do your own analysis to work out where you are overspending, underspending on tasks um, etc so really useful to get all that and that's really supporting your project accounting um, with some you know, real financial management of your project um, budgets and actuals okay so quite a lot of new things here in planner and um, quite a lot of those feeding through to the main application for our commercial customers of course all of it's still usable here for you if you're just a user of the free version of planner so I hope you found that um, session useful um, uh, if you haven't seen session one I recommend you go back and have a look at that calendars milestones uh, and risk coloring um, and just download the new planner it's uh, it's available if you've in fact you've already got planner as a fairly recent version um, it should tell you on planner when you next log in that there's a new version available if you've got the call home uh, facility switched on um, if not you can just go to the website um, uh, put your email address in and download a latest copy and it will upgrade your existing planner. Hope you found that useful. Thank you very much.